Well, good morning, guys. Welcome to the Sunday Youth Bible Study. Glad you are here with us. Um, glad you can join us for this lesson. I hope that you're uh, prepared, prepared to hear the Word of God, to uh, read the Word of God on your own, as you're going to do. And uh, go ahead and uh, get prepared to hear the Word of God. Um, you know, get a get a pen, get a Bible, be ready to underline things and to um, maybe even write things down in your own notebook, journal, whatever you want to call it, and uh, write down things that stand out to you, thoughts that you have, and uh, just be prepared to hear the Word of God. And it always means um, pray, pray, pray before you get into the Word of God. Pray before you uh, listen to any sort of lesson. Um, ask God for understanding, ask God for uh, the wisdom and uh, the ability to, to just to sit, listen, and hear, and um, you know, have his word really rest in your heart. Those are, those are good things that you should do before uh, you get into the word of God and um, being under a, a lesson. Today, we're going to go over uh, 2 Timothy 1. 8 through 14, and then chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. The title of our lesson here is, The Church is United Under Godly Leaders. I feel like that's a great title, um, only because we are in a church, I'm in a church. Uh, hopefully, uh, if, you're, if you're not uh, able to join us at North Park, you're in a, you know, a very solid church that has uh, very solid godly leaders and you're able to say that um, you get to see a church united under godly leaders. Uh, we certainly have that. You know, instead of a, instead of an example for you guys, I do not have, I do have questions though, before we get started, before we get into our, uh, our verses and our lesson, I would ask, um, are there, are there leaders? in your life? Have you placed yourself in their care, under their care, the care of a godly leader, a person who is uh, with all of his heart, strength, and all of his effort, he is following Christ? Do you put yourself under their care? Do you see their example? Do you see the way that they live their lives, the way that they trust Christ, and uh, how they functionally live for Christ? Do you see that? Do you see that example? And do you want to follow that example? God's Word does say that we should have godly examples that we imitate. Paul himself said to, you know, imitate me as he imitates Christ. Do you uh, seek to have your life mirror that of, of the godly people in your life, of your pastors? And not necessarily like having the same, you know, hobbies. That's not what we're talking about. But we're talking about the way that they live for God, the way that they functionally live out their lives under the authority of God and under the authority of Scripture, mirroring that, having that be our example for what life should really look like, because you should know what it should look like, right? But it's hard to know. That's why God allows us to have great examples of how to live that out. And then we have a better idea. We can see more clearly how to live a godly life. And then if you're placing yourself under the authority of godly leaders, you have someone to ask. You have someone to talk to, someone to counsel with about how to do life, how to um, grow up with, with God, with the word of God, under the authority of God, how that works. You need godly leadership. You just do. So do I. So does everybody. So there's some stuff to think about as we start. I'm going to go ahead and read over our verses. 2 Timothy 
1, 8 through 14, and then chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. And we will uh, pretty much turn around and read those again, or the first one, and uh, get into our lesson. Sound good? Starting at verse 8. So don't be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner. Instead, share in suffering for the gospel, relying on the power of God. He has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. This has now been made evident through the appearing of our Savior Jesus, who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. For this gospel, I was appointed a herald, apostle, and teacher. That is why I suffer these things. But I am not ashamed, because I know whom I have believed, and am persuaded that he is able to guard what has been entrusted to me until that day. Hold on to the pattern of sound teaching that you have heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Guard the good deposit through the Holy Spirit who lives in us. Now we're moving to chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. You, therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. What you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, commit to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Share in the suffering, share in suffering as a good soldier of Christ. No one serving as a soldier gets entangled in the concerns of a civilian life. He seeks to please the commanding officer. Also, if anyone competes as an athlete, he's not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. The hardworking farmer ought to be the first to get a share of the crops. Consider what I say, for the Lord will give you understanding in everything. It's a pretty great set of verses. There's a lot in there to study. There's a lot more to study in there than what we're going to cover today. So if I were you, I would take some time throughout the week, throughout the day, whenever you can, to do your own study, do your own cross-referencing. Look up some, uh, some sweet commentaries, solid commentaries on these verses. And, and do your own study. There's a, lot, there's a lot there to look at. There's a lot there to study. But for our purposes this morning, let's get started. Uh, read it again. First Timothy, Second Timothy, uh, chapter one, verses eight through twelve. <clears throat> so Timothy, Timothy was bold about Christ and the gospel because of the power and the character of of God. And Paul was imprisoned, not for being a criminal, but for doing the work of the Lord. He's faced a lot of persecution and is facing a lot of persecution. Um, but Timothy, he had no need to be ashamed for his ministry partner because Paul, Paul was imprisoned for the work of the gospel. Paul was imprisoned for doing what God had called him to do, for standing firm in the gospel like he should. He continued, Timothy continued doing the Lord's work and was willing to share in the suffering himself. There's no need, no need to be ashamed when you're suffering for what is righteous, right? There is such a thing as suffering for doing wrong, is there not? Have you experienced that? I'm sure everyone has. I mean, I know everyone has, um, but it's not the same as when you suffer for doing what is right, right? When, uh, when fellow believers suffer for following Christ, and you know you will, we know we will, our response should be solidarity. Our confidence should not be in ourselves, but in God's power and His grace. His ability to hold us up. His ability to restrain us. We know it is God who saves, and He who upholds us 
and it's his power, not ours. So here's a quick question. Why can we sometimes struggle to be unashamed of Jesus? Do you ever struggle with that? Being unashamed of Jesus. Why can we struggle to be unashamed of Jesus? In other words, why do you struggle with being ashamed of your faith sometimes or ashamed of Jesus? Now, don't, uh, don't pretend that this never happens to you because then you won't get anywhere as far as growth, pretending to have the right answer because the, the right answer is, is so terrible. Um, if you're not in the habit of, of confessing the truth, confessing the real struggle, confessing the real sin, then you're going to be stuck in the habit of, of lying to yourself and to God, and you don't, you don't want that. Um, you know, I know the reason that I've ever struggled with this is it's approval. It's pretty common across the board. It's, it's, a, it's approval. It's the approval of man. It's the approval of people around you. It's losing your reputation. It's, it's, it's um, being held in contempt by others, and that's an unpleasant feeling, right? And it can cause a struggle, for sure. And when you're standing for Jesus, it's always going to happen. It's, it's a divisive thing that uh, you would stand up for Christ, stand up for the gospel, and stand against sin and the way that the world operates is offensive to other people. And you're going to have a struggle of being able to stand for that or not. Paul told a Roman citizen... Timothy, not to be ashamed of Jesus, who was crucified by Roman authorities, or of Paul, who was in Roman prison awaiting execution. Instead, Timothy should be willing to suffer himself. The, uh, the strong motivating force, the desire to be liked and accepted, <laughs> it can be overwhelming and it'll be a strong motivating force in much of our uh, decision-making, whether we realize it or not. The, uh, the power to, to live unashamed or um, you know, to live for the approval of God doesn't come from within us. You can't uh, convince yourself to think right about these things, but it comes from God. It comes from, from laying your heart before him and, and pouring it out before him and confessing where you're at. It comes from growing in trust and dependence on Christ so that um, you're, you're getting to a point, you're growing to a point where you know that your approval is from God and God alone And that um, as a believer, as, a, as somebody whom God is holding, the approval of man just isn't going to be enough. It's not going to be enough. You're going to need the approval of God. So it can be a powerful witness to show our love for other believers, um, even when it risks our social status. And it often will, almost always. <laughs> You're not going to have social status. <laughs> Paul was calling uh, Timothy to a willingness to take risks in order to identify with Jesus, in order to identify with himself in prison, right, awaiting execution. There's similar examples throughout the Bible, uh, especially in the book of Hebrews. Moses chose to suffer with the people of God instead of taking advantage of his status as Pharaoh's grandson. Christians endured taunts and afflictions in order to care for believers in prison. So take a minute to think about this. What is it 
What is it that drives you, that motivates you? Is it the approval of God? Or is it, is it man's approval? What are you going to do to engage the struggle? Only God, truly only God, in His power, in His power, in His might, and in His wisdom, can miraculously cause you to seek His approval over man's approval. So are you, are you begging Him for that? Are you going to God for that? Or are you trying to figure it out on your own? Are you trying to figure out how to be okay on your own? Or are you taking your, your broken, incapable heart before God and begging Him? <laughs> Read over 2 Timothy 13, 1, 13 and 14. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 13 and 14. So Christian leaders have uh, have a role to play, an important role to play in preserving the gospel. Um, I mean, obviously God uh, makes his word endure through the ages. Uh, it, it, there's just no way that man could make it go away. And um, godly leaders caring for that word, preaching that word, and, um, well, caring for it is, is one of the ways that he does that. That's what... Uh, one of the one of the things that the Protestant Reformation was was a, a deep care for the Word of God being preached accurately and rightly, and um, preserving it. There was a there was an effort to recover the sound teaching that Paul had given to the early church, and to guard the good deposit of gospel truth entrusted to the church. The primary way that we're going to, uh, sorry, I'm falling off the screen. The primary way that we're going to continue to pass God's word is um, to pass it on to keep preserving it. Uh, obviously, it's going to be through studying and teaching the scriptures. That's why we teach from the Bible. That's why the Word of God is central to, to every lesson and um, to, to every sermon on Sunday that you sit and listen to. The Word of God is central. It is about the Word of God. It's about the Word of God being preached accurately. The scriptures have been entrusted to the church, and we must steward them well. And it's only scripture that can save people. It's only the uh, accurate preaching of the gospel, of the word of God, that is going to help anybody. No tampering or uh, dressing up is going to help anybody. It's one of the... Um, That's one of the key things that you should notice in in, in our church um, is how carefully our leaders care for the Word of God. How carefully they care to follow the Word of God. How in-depthly their lives are connected to God's commands. It's an amazing thing, especially if you know them and know them personally, that there's, there's no falsehood there. You know, these, these, these leaders of ours adhere to the word of God and they lean on Christ and depend on Christ in a biblical way. You can, you can hold their lives up to the word of God and know 
that there's not any deceit going on there, that, that they are solid people that you can trust to follow, that you're not going to make a giant mistake if you tried to imitate their example. Those are the kind of leaders that you should be under. Those are the kind of people that you should seek to have in your life. Because you're going to follow something. So, what attributes should characterize Christian leaders as they stand firm in sound doctrine? Breeze over our um, verses that we read. Um, read through those real quick. And find some attributes that characterize Christian leaders as they stand firm in sound doctrine. <clears throat> Paul said that our holding and guarding should be done with faith and love and dependence upon the Holy Spirit. Dependence on the Holy Spirit. As a person who is dependent on the Holy Spirit, and if you're uh, learning to trust in Him, you're learning to... Um, have a higher regard for God's approval than man's approval, you're going to run into um, being serious about sound doctrine. You're going to be serious about sound doctrine, and you're going to run into people who have bad doctrine. Oftentimes, people that uh, are serious about sound doctrine and stand firm on it can have a reputation for being harsh and unloving. And certainly, you don't want to be giving people the truth like a jerk and um, trying to squash their feelings with the truth or give it in a way that is so unkind and so uh, rough and not gentle that it's going to hurt people and they're not even going to see the point. But when you do give people the truth, you have to give them the truth. And that's often going to go against what they're living in now. And you can't, you can't dress that up. That's, that's why persecution arises. Because you're, you're, you're standing firm and aligning yourself with Christ, with God, against the world and its operating system. Against the, um, the darkness that is in the world. You're, you're not going to be liked for it. People are going to call you a jerk when, when, you, when you stand firm in that. Paul said that uh, the Lord's servant must not quarrel, must be gentle to everyone, able to teach, patient, instructing his opponents with gentleness. Instructing people with gentleness doesn't mean avoiding the truth, though. read over 2 Timothy chapter 2 verses 1 through 7. Paul told Timothy to be strong in God's grace. Grace is not about our strength or our power. And yet the command is for us to be strong we see something similar in chapter 1 where Paul says that God is able to guard what has been entrusted to him, but then he commands Timothy to guard the good deposit. These are uh, two instances of, of many in the Bible which remind us that we are totally dependent upon God. We are completely dependent upon God.
but we still have an active role to play. We are not able to stay in bed all day and consider that we are being sanctified. We want faith that is working through love. And we ought to work out our salvation, for it is God who works in us. Paul said that he worked harder than any other apostle, yet it was not him, rather it was the grace of God with him. You can't lay on your couch and be sanctified all day, but rather you need to have all of your your effort and your strength in running to God and begging him for his strength and 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 asking him to grow you and and learning how to depend and trust in him knowing that he has got you God's got you. He does. God has given you godly examples. He's given you people to imitate, people that have taught you how to depend on God. He has given you people that you can go to and talk about how to depend on God, how incapable you are, how unable you are. He's given you people that you can trust people that want to see God glorified, people that want to see his church grow up in the most honest way. Are you making use of the things that God has provided for you? Those are the best gifts that God can give you. Not a house, not a car, not a job, not money, not an easy day. The best things that God has given you pertain to life and godliness. And you have that. So are you making use of that? Do you think you should be? I mean, that's a silly question, but hopefully, hopefully you think, yeah. <laughs> you know, as the times go on, if you're watching uh, Pastor Ryan's messages on persecution, you know you know that it's coming. If you watch the news, if you look at society, you know what's coming. There's going to be hard times. There's going to be an increase increase in persecution that believers are going to come against. There's going to be more resistance and pushback to the gospel message than ever before. We're going to enter into a very special time. How can you prepare your heart for hardships that are going to come? Are you going to remain unashamed of the gospel? Who's going to teach you to do that? That's all we've got for this week. I, uh, well, I hope it was beneficial to you. And uh, I will catch you guys next week. Have a wonderful week. I'll be praying for you. Bye.